A very warm welcome to all. I express my gratitude to Principal Madam, the conveners and members of IQAC, Dr. Chandom Chakraborty, and the listeners of uh, today's lecture, as well as the technical support team, for giving me an opportunity to present my views today. All around us, uh, we are surrounded by plants and benefit greatly from them in our daily lives. Rarely do we ponder about the inner life of plants, their senses, their cognition or their emotions. Today, I would like to present some evidence on the mind of plants. Do plants feel and think? A large number of scientific studies shows that plants can perceive physical, chemical and biological signals with the help of their organs and cells. However, unlike animals, there are no particular sense organs like eyes, nose, ears, skin and tongue that are dedicated to the perception of a particular type of stimulus. I will try to mention some scientific studies regarding these sensory feelings one by one. The different types of signals which are perceived by plants include light, temperature, rain, sound, water, gases, volatile compounds and biological signals such as pollinators, predators, pathogens and uh, different uh, types of other plants. Plants perceive light as an energy source for photosynthesis as well as a signal source which induces various physiological responses. Photoreceptors are light sensitive proteins involved in the sensing and responding to light. There are two types of photoreceptors in plants, photosynthetic pigments mainly chlorophyll and photosensory receptors. The latter mediate non-photosynthetic light responses. The signals from the photosensory receptors can regulate the expression of genes associated with cell division and enlargement which can form various tissues such as floral bud and leaf primordia. Uh, this slide lists the different uh, types of photoreceptors which are present. An important one is cryptochrome. It is a protein which is uh, synthesized from the cry1 and cry2 genes and they have certain evolutionary precursors like the photolysis and uh, these cryptochromes they elicit particular photoresponses such as hypocotyl growth, flavonoid synthesis, flower induction etc. Plants uh, are also uh, known to be responsive to smell. Now we all know that a parasitic plant procures nutrients from other living plants. In a study by Justin et al. published in uh, Science, it was shown that uh, Cascuta species, commonly called as the dodder, utilizes certain volatile cues for host detection. Cascuta species seedlings exhibit directed growth towards tomato, impatience and wheat plants. Moreover, seedlings can distinguish tomato and wheat volatiles and preferentially grow towards the former. Cascuta uses smell to distinguish the beneficial host and repel from the dangerous one. In another study by Vogel et al, the uh, parasitic life cycle of this Cascuta campestris was shown to be to such a great extent that uh, certain parts of uh, the genome had uh, of the host plant genome had actually left footprints into the genome of Cascuta campristus. So much so that Cascuta had lost its ability of photosynthesis because it totally dependent upon the because it was totally dependent upon the host plant for getting its nourishment. So obviously, when Cascuta is so much dependent upon the host plant. It has to recognize the host and it has been shown repeatedly that this recognition of host was based upon the volatile signals. The plant uh, defense system according to the new research has been uh, shown to be uh, involved in number of other uh, functions of the plant as well. 
the plants can detect volatile organic compounds basically known as the odor molecules and these compounds are what allows the plant to attract pollinators, deter pests and react to nearby diseases and give uh, off certain scents for themselves. So, uh, we are familiar with the scent of the different plants such as the rose plant, the tulsi plant etc. But it is also true that plants they not only give out the scent, uh, the scent but they can also sense the uh, odors which are emitted by other plants. Plants also respond to sound. Many of us who have a knack of gardening know that plants uh, respond or grow very well when treated with soothing and kind words. Bioacoustics has been extensively researched by Monica Gagliano and her co-workers. Behavioral responses uh, to incident sound, frequency selective response and acoustic emissions by roots of zea maze has been reported. Now in the diagram here, figure A shows the behavioral response of young roots to a continuous 220 hertz sound which is indicated by the white arrow. The root tips here clearly bend towards the sound source. Figure B shows the phonotropic assay assessing the response of young roots to water bond vibrations at different frequencies. As is evident from the graph, best response is measured between 200 to 300 hertz. Acoustic emission of young roots are measured optically with micro scanning laser droplet uh, uh, vibrometer which uh, and the results of which are shown here in the figure C. Vibrations are measured at the elongation zone of the root tip shown in figure A by this red star and uh, they have been uh, actually shown that uh, these root tips they um, generate certain loud and uh, sound such as in the form of a clicking sound which can be measured even at a distance when passing through a fluid medium. Regarding the plant response to sound, interesting work has been done by Jonathan O'Callaghan who showed that when caterpillar plant comes to feed upon uh, the mustard, uh, when caterpillar comes to feed upon the mustard plant, the plant actually uh, releases this mustard oil as the volatile which actually repels the caterpillar. Now when uh, a particular, when this particular mustard plant is hearing the sound of the wind only, then it does not waste its energy in producing this repellent because there obviously it does not need to repel any uh, insect or any other pests. In another study by the researchers of the University of Missouri headed by Heidi Apple and Rex Crawford, it was found that plants uh, respond to the sounds of caterpillars nibbling away at their leaves. Now plants are also opined to talk to each other. Studies show that plant responses to neighbors can be modified by above ground response and uh, it has been suggested that uh, these modifications are mediated by below ground interactions. Two decades ago while researching on her doctoral thesis ecologist Susan Simmert discovered that trees communicate their needs and send each other certain volatile uh, or rather uh, certain uh, sensory uh, cues as well as nutrients via a network of fungi buried in the soil. She opined that the fungal filigrees had the trees send warning signals without environmental change uh, and which search uh, which help them to uh, search for kings to transfer their nutrients to the neighboring plants. Now interestingly when a plant senses that it is about to die it uh, actually transmits its uh, nutrients to another plant. So uh, now um, scientists are focusing on understanding how these vital communication networks could be disrupted by environmental threats which are so much prevalent these days uh, such as climate change, beetle infestation and water logging. So basically uh, we can now understand that plants do have a number of sensory responses. Strikingly, 
does plant feel pain too? Now plants do not have pain receptors like nerves or a brain as we all know. But many plants can perceive and communicate physical stimuli and damage in ways that are more sophisticated than it was previously thought of. A number of studies have shown that uh, plants do feel pain as is shown in uh, the research findings or other the research papers that have been published. And uh, interestingly, uh, the vegetables which are picked and consumed when in the raw condition are the ones which actually feel the major, major majority of the pain. Now, Phil Cohen of Australia rightly pointed out that animal right activists are often in the news, but has anyone ever protested for vegetable rights? Now, that is surely a food for thought. Uh, we all know that plant produce certain anesthetics such as cocaine um, and uh, atropine and uh, several other sedatives which are used uh, very much for uh, consumption as drugs. But uh, contrastingly, there are certain chemicals which actually can sedate plants. Yokova and his co-workers showed that mimosa leaves, the ones which we commonly know as the touch me not, Pea tendrils and insectivorous plants like Venus flytrap, sundew flytrap all lost both their autonomous and touched induced movements when exposed to chemical anesthetics particularly diethyl ether. The effects were observed using single lens reflex camera, confocal microscopy and silver chloride electrode. So if plants can feel pain then do they have neurotransmitters and neuroregulators? Recent evidence has shown that neurologically active compounds play important role in the physiology of higher plants. Plants are complex living beings which are extremely sensitive to environmental factors continuously adapting to the ever-changing environment. Emerging research documents that plants sense memorize and process experiences and use these informations for their adaptive behavior and evolution. As any other living and evolving system, plants act as a knowledge accumulating entity. In fact, the journal Plant Signaling and Behavior was launched as a platform for exchanging information and fostering research on plant neurobiology in order to allow the understanding of plants in their whole integrated communicative and behavioral complexities. Specialized cells and uh, evolutionally optimized for effective translation of sensory input into developmental and motoric output. Advances in plant cell biology, molecular biology and sensory ecology has been discussed in the framework of the new discipline of plant science, namely plant neurobiology. Coming to the question of plant intelligence and cognition, Barbara McClintock, a notable plant biologist, posed the notion of the thoughtful cell in her Nobel Prize address in 1984. Now, uh, the system structure which are necessary for a thoughtful cell was revealed by comparison with interactome and connectome. Now, what are interactome and connectomes? The cell system is constructed of estimated 100,000 different cellular proteins that act as linking elements to form an interactome and a simple nervous system like that of the nematode worm Cynorhabditis elegans contains some 300 or more neurons to form a connectome. Such interactome and connectome have been proposed to be a part of the plant cell as well. The plant root cap is a group of some 200 cells that act holistically in responding to numerous signals and thus agrees with Darwin's description of acting like a brain similar to that of lower group of organism. Intelligent behavior requires assessment of different choices and taking the beneficial one, decisions are constantly required to optimize the plant phenotype to a dynamic environment and the uh, cambium which is actually a tissue is thought to assess 
uh, these environmental signals and divert or remove the resources uh, from the different uh, root and shoot organisms and thereby manipulate the different uh, mechanisms related to the intelligence of the plant. Environmental awareness likely indicates consciousness. Spontaneity in plant behavior indicates intention. Volatile organic compounds are used as signals in plant interaction and may be the equivalent of language for recognition by individual plants. Behavior requires both learning and memory and is indicated by plant response to herbivores, diseases and abiotic stress. In this slide, I have shown certain books and papers which have actually dealt with the intelligence and cognition of plant. So, if plant is intelligent, do they have memory? Memory is said to be mediated by three different mechanisms. The first mechanism is cross stress tolerance as stated in the editorial article of Environmental and Experimental Botany 2013. Plants are exposed to various stress factors at the same time or at different times of their life cycle. Thus, plant plasticity is essential to overcome these stress factors that occurs repeatedly in the life of a plant. Plant plasticity is possible thanks to the great capacity of plants to give different phenotypes from a single genotype under different growth conditions. The second mechanism that is thought to mediate plant memory is through melatonin. Now we all know that melatonin is a neurotransmitter which is found in different organisms and has been extensively researched in humans and other animals. But this melatonin is also found in plant and is thought to be involved in the process of uh, plant um, memory and uh, is also associated with flower and seed development, reproductive capacity and root growth. The third mechanism uh, which supports plant memory is actually the one which uh, supports the long term memory is through prions. Now Professor Kendall was the one who proposed that prions are the ones which are responsible for the long term memory of the plants. These prions are basically uh, proteinaceous infectious particles which have the characteristic of uh, developing fatal and transmittive neurodegenerative diseases. The prions uh, needless to say are more uh, studied in case of humans and animals but they are also involved in the cognition of plants. Now speaking of plant memory, plant cognition, plant feeling, plant thinking, uh, the pioneering work of Sir Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bose deserves special insight. Sir A.J.C. Bose, as we all know, was a world-renowned physicist and botanist who pioneered the investigation of radio and microwave optics and also made significant contributions in plant science. Bose conducted most of his studies on Mimosa pudica and Desmodium gyrans plants his major contributions uh, was in the field of biophysics and uh, the demonstration of the electrical nature of the conductance of these different stimuli such as wound, chemical agents, etc. Before him, scientists used to think that conduction of stimuli was of chemical nature, but he was the first one who said that the conduction of these stimuli was actually of a more phys uh, physical or neuronal nature. In order to understand the movement of plant towards the light source, Bose invented the torsional recorder. He also invented the crescograph, the uh, picture of which is shown in this slide, for measuring the growth of the plants. He researched the mechanism of the seasonal effects of plants uh, the effects of chemical inhibition on plant stimuli and the effect of temperature. Now, as we all know that plants are adaptive towards stress and environmental changes and a particular enzyme known as glyoxylase, also sometimes called as the glyoxylase, has been found to be involved in this adaptive responses. These glyoxylases are enzymes which are involved in the detoxification of methyl glyoxal 
which is a cytotoxic byproduct of the respiratory process of glycolysis. It has been more extensively studied in animals than in plants, but this enzyme system has been associated with various stress response and a number of isoforms are uh, actually respons uh, responsible for the different uh, processes in plants such as seed germination, cell division, starch synthesis, pollination, ammonium nutrition, uh, signaling, cell sheath formation, aging, etc. So, uh, coming to the conclusion, uh, in our daily lives, we, uh, we are dependent on plants every moment. Plants are uh, uh, helping us in a number of ways like providing us with food, shelter, oxygen, um, medicines, cosmetics and what not. And uh, these plants are the complex living beings which are extremely sensitive to the environmental factors continuously adapting to uh, the different processes which they experience. And plants use these information for their adaptive behavior as well as evolution. So let us for a moment stop and think about the feelings of the plant, uh, the plants who are actually our altruistic neighbors. So thank you all for the patient hearing today.